I don't know who I'm kidding. It's like 75 degrees outside when I'm filming this. I don't know. Um, but hey, a handful of years back, it's like everybody just suddenly found out about Krampus, a pretty ancient piece of alpine folklore, was suddenly a household name in America and became the subject of a big budget horror film. Um, of course, anytime that something like that enters the zeitgeist, there's, there's gonna be low budget knockoffs of it and Krampus was no exception. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at a few of these and find out if they have any link to each other or even to the actual legend itself. But when you have a fun premise like say, evil Santa Claus, uh, how can you go wrong? Or, or should I say, how bad can they be? Looks like we're starting off back in 2013 with Krampus the Christmas Devil. And here's the inside scoop. If you start up a movie and it has this at the beginning, congratulations, you are in store for some bottom of the barrel crap. I don't feel like it gets called out enough, but yeah, ITN pretty much just releases anything. We start off with Krampus here with cloven hooves, dragging a naughty child to dump in a lake, but he escapes and then cut to him as an adult, now a cop. And yeah, the acting is gonna be uh, stellar here. You're up early, what's wrong? There was another. Where? Not far. And right before Christmas. And there's a rash of missing children and murders and some detectives that have a hard time staying in focus are on the case. Like, like look at this. Guys, it's the ring on the front of the camera. You just turn it until the thing that you're trying to film looks sharp. We then see a meeting between Santa and the Krampus and they talk about the naughty list and taking care of the bad kids. I should point out that they're just meeting out in a snowy field in the dark and make sure to stand a foot away from each other, but also make sure to get as little in frame as possible. There's a box of evidence labeled 2011, so it's possible that that's when this one takes place. And then there's these two kids who, uh, come, on, come on, how how hard is it to focus a damn camera? They actually find the cramp out in a field and they see him and just start opening fire with machine guns. Uh, granted, they had just seen some blood on the ground, but they have no connection between that and the random guy in a Santa suit that they just see walking around. They, they literally just see him in the distance, say, what is that? And then start shooting. So he kills and captures them and takes them back to his lair, which is just the basement basically. And, and yeah, I, I love that they talk about the Krampus kidnappings happening all over the world, but I guess Santa and and the bad dude just have this little hideout in scenic, eerie Pennsylvania. So the Krampus realizes that Jeremy is the kid that got away and he's still on the naughty list. So he's coming after him. And oh, oh but there's an, there's an ad in a bar for something coming out in January of 2013. And this is set at Christmas and advertising something beer related a year in advance seems unlikely. So this is probably December of 2012 and at a bar where, yup, everyone is out of damn focus. And, and in slow motion for some reason. And then Bill Oberts Jr. pops in and let me tell you, this guy apparently does anything. Dude has an Emmy and has been in cool stuff, but then just pops up in stuff like this. And then, hey kids, if you're at the level of filmmaking where you can't even focus your camera, maybe don't attempt to choreograph fight scenes or else you'll end up with this. And look, I know that I keep harping on this focus thing, but I'm not joking when I say that like every third shot in this movie looks like I'm trying to read the fourth line of the eye chart. So yeah, there's this whole subplot with Jeremy's enemies taking his family hostage, but Krampus shows up to kill his wife and then kidnap and apparently rape his daughter. Oh, nice. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. The next one came out two years later in 2015 with Krampus The Reckoning, arriving the same year as the big budget Doherty version. 
It starts with the telling of the crampy legend and an odd little girl named Zoe. And she has an abusive foster mother and this little Krampus doll that calls up a real one that looks like this. After her mother is killed, she's checked into a hospital and tells her caseworker that Krampus burns the bad people and then just generally acts like a brat. She has documents placing her in her foster home in October of 15, but it's commented that that picture of her is two years old and she hasn't aged. So I think this is supposed to be Christmas of 2017 then? Two years in the future from when it was released? Unless her placement was current and the picture was just old. But then a comment is made about only three months ago and she's talking about her placement. So this is 2015 and Zoe was born in 2004. So she's 11 years old. Uh, but, but wait, her date of birth then switches to 07. So she's eight? But then she says she's 04 on the phone. So they're really unclear about when this girl was born. Her previous foster family says that they had her in their care 20 years ago and she hasn't aged. And he says the picture was in 91 or 92, which is said to be more than 20 years ago. And it turns out that Rachel's parents died in a fire when she was very young. And yeah, uh, things just move really, really slowly in this film. And it's, it's pretty boring. And it turns out that Rachel and Zoe are sisters. And it was Rachel that first called the Krampus who killed her family and she trades her life for that of her foster son. Her gravestone confirms that we're in 2015, and yeah. <sighs> God. Merry Christmas, everybody. But you know what? Uh, no, this, this doesn't even feel Christmassy. It barely has anything to do with the holiday. It doesn't even need to be Krampus. That stuff is shoehorned in there to make some sort of theme, but it barely fits. At least the Christmas Devil had like 10% holiday stuff happening, what with Santa being in it, even if the Christmas deal doesn't truly matter to the plot. But here, I almost forgot that it was supposed to be a Yuletide feature. Moving on to 2016. Oh, great. We have Krampus the Devil Returns, and it's a sequel to The Christmas Devil with the same director coming back. And let's talk about the power of film for a second. The idea of film is to immerse yourself in an imaginary world, to be so enraptured by the fantasy on screen that you forget that you're watching something. And nothing breaks that immersion like, I don't know, um, forgetting that you can't just have someone's personal phone number on screen so you have to blur it out, making your professional movie look like an episode of Cops. There's a flyer saying pictures with Santa are Thursday, December 18th, and going backwards, that would place the film in either 2011 or 2014, since those are the years in which that date lines up, assuming that this universe lines up with ours. But oddly, this kid asks for Black Ops 3, which came out in 2015, so it probably just doesn't line up. Santa's back, and hey, that makes things easy. It's 2016 here, and Jeremy's back too. And some police go to talk to him and one of Jeremy's friends is there and just kind of appears and this cop just straight up pulls his gun on him. Like, guys, you just went out there to talk to a guy that you want information from and there's someone there with him. Do you really need to draw a weapon at any random that you see? Along with the scene in the first one, I never want to visit this town because it seems like the police there are just itching to shoot people. Sean C. Phillips is in this because of course he is, and Krampus has a different look now with a more elaborate mask instead of the cheap store-bought one from the first film. And I, I don't know, I, I still love that you have these ancient magical forces of Santa and the Krampus and supposedly their operation is worldwide, but they just focus everything in this one little Pennsylvania town. Jeremy says his daughter has been missing for five years. So this is five years after the last one. So that's set in 2011 then. So I guess that box of evidence is correct. The Camelot Leatherface is here, just hemming it up. Ah! I have no idea they have one in the pipe. Well, Rick, I didn't! And okay, uh, bear with me here. They, they capture Jeremy, tie him up, and then have his brainwashed daughter rape him uh 
Merry Christmas. And then, when captured, the thugs torture Jeremy by cutting an eight into his chest. But his lady friend? Well, they flick her nipples. What? That, that hurts. There's a shootout in which people get shot with no bullet holes or anything, and almost everyone dies but Jeremy, and it's revealed that he, I guess he killed Santa's daughter? It's, it's really weird because it seems like the little small-scale crime thing is going on, but it's supposed to be Santa. They, they don't really get into any other aspect of Claw's lore, and he's just this skinny, dirty old man in Erie. Jer is told that the encounter with his daughter was real, and she's pregnant now, and he's unable to kill Santa or himself. Ho, ho, holy crap was that unnecessary, but hey, at least it was in focus. Also in 2016 was Krampus Unleashed and is directed by the same guy who made Krampus the Reckoning, so is possibly connected? We're told that a guy hid treasure back in 1898 and years later, a group of fortune hunters went out looking for it. They accidentally summon the Krampus, who looks very different from the silly CG Reckoning one, and it kills everyone. We then cut to modern day with intro music featuring what might be the worst rendition of Let It Snow that I have ever heard. Like, it, like is, this, is this a joke? Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but a fire is so delightful. Since we know no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. We have a family getting together for Christmas in Arizona, and they end up finding the Summoning Stone, which is, uh, I guess, activated by a cigarette. Krampus shows up and starts killing people, and they went with what was basically a guy in a Bigfoot costume, which may look silly, but it's the best looking Krampus that we've seen so far, e even if it doesn't look very Christmassy. It attacks a local. Okay, and what is your name and location, ma'am? Bonnie Tyler. When it killed her boyfriend, did she get a total eclipse of the heart? The family gets short work made of them, with only the kids and Bonnie making it out alive, and they meet an old guy who conveniently fills them in on the lure, and they have to trap the big dude in an old mine by burying him, which they do in a really anticlimactic fashion. There's then a final tag with a baby Krampus that goes on for just a really, really long time. Again, there's very little Christmas here, except for the fact that the family is getting together for a holiday celebration, but this Krampus has very little to do with it. It's just a basic demon summoned by a rock that kills anything in sight. So, hey, uh, Robert Conway, why do you keep making Krampus movies if you don't actually want to make a Krampus movie, huh? Moving on to 2017, we have Mother Krampus, which opens with text talking about missing kids back in 1921, and then more in 92. And then it says there's been peace for 25 years, so right off the bat, it's 2017. And, and I guess this was originally entitled 12 Deaths of Christmas, and that gives me a bad feeling that this has very little to do with Krampus again. A little boy is lured in by a woman in a cloak, and then, oh no. Uh, this lady from that Tooth Fairy movie? Uh, she has a dad that's thankfully not five years younger than her, so... Uh, and, and I guess that's a joke that you'll only get if you watched my video on the Tooth Fairy movies, so if you haven't, I, I guess go watch that and then come back and laugh heartily. His phone says that January 18th is a Wednesday, which was how that lined up in 2017, so that makes sense, but when we meet her estranged husband, well, look, look, this is not a slam on the actress because she's she's actually pretty decent, but placed next to this guy, they just do not seem like the same age range. The town realizes that a woman who was a witch and stole the kids' souls back in 92 is back, and they call her Frau Perchta, and they hung her back then, and when kids say her name in the mirror three times, she appears because, uh, what, 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 what movie is this again? 
She strings this girl up like a tree, so at least there's some sort of a holiday link going on. And they say that Vanessa has an older sister taken by the witch who was six at the time and three years older than her. So she was three in 92, born in 89, so would, would be 28 here. There's some pretty silly melodrama happening in which our main character acts like a really horrible person. What? You scared of getting old, is that it? So... I mean, he doesn't really have to worry about that quite yet. Uh, I mean, dude's like 19 years old. Witchy poo attacks, and at least it's not a cheap mask. It's a, it's a halfway decent makeup design. I'm, I'm not mad at that. And the husband subplot is really weird because he left Vanessa a few months ago to date a younger woman. But then she gets killed by the witch and they reconcile. And I think it's supposed to be a touching moment or something. Really, really isn't. So dad dies and so does mom and it's revealed that the witch in 92 never even took the kids. They just blamed her and Vanessa's mom was the killer. So which witch gets her revenge and takes little Amy away and gives her to some creepy dude in a robe. Merry Christmas, everyone! There's not even a Krampus in this one, and I swear, it, it, it might as well have just been Tooth Fairy 4. There's really not much of a difference. Moving on to 2018, or I guess moving back, since we're now looking at Krampus Origins. And, and you know, for as much flack as I gave to ITN, I should point out that you should fear this uncorked logo just as much. It's just as much of a sign as Backyard Schlock as them. This one's written by Robert Conway, who made Reckoning and Unleashed, but not directed by him. And more opening text talks about 1918 and gives us a group of American soldiers in World War I France. And there's a book that summons Krampus. And we jump ahead three weeks to a small orphanage. We then spend just a ridiculous amount of time setting up various characters without much going on. And like the others that Conway wrote, it's pretty yawn-inducing. Like those others, it's competently made. The performances are nice, there's some production value behind it, and doing a period piece with a super low budget is a dicey gambit, for, but, but for the most part it works. Uh, too bad it doesn't really do anything but just present a series of scenes that don't contribute to the overall narrative one after the other. Then, like Christmas Devil Had Oberts, this one has Maria Olsen another actor that's been in a number of acclaimed things, and then shows up in these $5 movies too. Finally, at over a half hour into the movie, the main plot is brought in as one of the teachers was married to one of the soldiers from the beginning, and she's told that he was killed and is given his belongings, one of which is the summoning stone, and oh hey, hey storyline, nice of you to join us. We're all here just, just waiting on you. A couple of the kids call up Krampus, but then there's a new kid named Nick that's causing problems, and the big fella shows up as this helmet-wearing monster. And he says that he's been locked up in the book since before man, put there by the fairies. And he's a pretty cool suit effect with some digital enhancement that works pretty well. Finally, the teacher is able to use the book to capture him again and restore the children. And again, it's set on Christmas and features Krampus, but there's so little mention of it, and it matters so little to the plot, that the film could have been called anything at all. It doesn't use any Krampus lore or elements outside of the name, but at least it's not overly depressing and looks nice. That's all the praise that this one gets. Our final entry is also from 2018, and oh yay, it's Mother Krampus 2, Sleigh Ride, and oh. Oh yay. look. Look, looking forward to it. We're no longer in the UK and are somewhere in the US, and a guy is just axe murdered by a woman in a mask and wig, not a witch. So it's looking to be pretty different than the first one. Lady Leatherface then takes out the whole family, and then there's a group of women doing community service, and they just casually reveal the killer with this shot that's reversed for some reason. Look, look at this, it, it's reversed. The girls need to deliver food to the needy, and here's a tip for indie filmmakers. If you're going to use digital snow, uh, scale it. These are the tiniest ever snowflakes falling in the most uniform formation ever, especially when you cut to a wider shot and the flakes are the same size. If, if they were that tiny in a close-up, they'd be 
even smaller when you pull out, guys. They visit the crazy lady, and it's kind of weird because they established them all as being silly together and not horrible people, but then they just start being as mean as possible to the old lady. I mean, at this point, they do not know that she's an axe murderer, but they just start being as rude as possible for no reason at all. And weirdly, they all just hang around her house, just chilling. They, they make a sort of mention about having to stay for at least half an hour, but they're not even doing anything, so it, it's like they just invade this lady's house and hang out with one even having sex with her boyfriend, like while the old lady makes them soup. That they were supposed to be delivering food to her. It takes until an hour and 10 minutes in before she starts doing anything and killing and by this time you're just kind of bored and annoyed and she kills everyone because no one's able to fight back against a short fat old lady in a cheap leather face mask that limits her scope of vision. Finally, someone just hits her over the head uh, once, and they stab her directly in the left eye, but she's still alive, and oh, that left eye looks fine now, but left eye always looked fine, as long as she's not burning down your house. R.I.P. Then she's just caught by a magically appearing cop lady who shoots her, and then just leaves two people with the body, just, just walks away. So... Yeah, still no Krampus in Mother Krampus, and no connection to the first one, or anything at all, really, but at least it has some Christmas stuff going on, I guess, but no date or anything, so we'll just say real time 2018. So there you have it. It's six movies, and oddly, uh, even though they share some titles and some creators, only two are linked to each other, and yeah, they're, they're a mess. Uh, most of these were really not that enjoyable to watch. They, they, they weren't oppressively bad. Like, uh, you won't hate yourself watching them. Uh, several of them are just kind of boring. Um, but n none of them are really fun enough to be si that, that, like, that's so bad it's good quality. Most of them are just that general kind of bad. So, apparently Krampus movies are a difficult thing to pull off. But maybe if they actually tried to make a movie about Krampus, uh, then they would have a little bit more success instead of whatever they were doing here. Uh, if you've seen any of these or if you want to see any of them, uh, let me know down below if you know of some better Krampus movies besides the obvious ones uh, like Rare Exports and Krampus. Let me know those down below. I would like to watch them and check them out and see more Krampus stuff that actually deals with the Krampus itself. Uh, tell me that in the comments. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, I'd appreciate that. It'd be your little holiday gift to me. And uh, I would just want to say the thank you to my patrons who support the channel, which you can do as well at patreon.com slash movie timelines. You guys have been so great to me all year long. I really appreciate it. Um, and I really like the little community stuff we have and the little Zoom calls and all that fun stuff, which you guys could be a part of by going to Patreon. I, I would love that. And uh, overall, no matter what you celebrate, or if you don't even celebrate at all. I want you to have a happy holidays and enjoy this season. Uh, yeah. See you guys soon.